Hello everybody, welcome to my first ASMR video. If you're new here and don't know who I am, my name is Bloom and I am quite new to the world of ASMR, but I have had a lot of requests um, to give it a go and I have dove into the world a little bit, learned some things, got some inspiration. Um, so I'm going to be doing some ASMR my way and I'm going to try and make it a little bit of an all-rounder and hopefully I will um, satisfy everybody's tingles. <laughs> I'm going to do my best. Um, so go easy on me and I hope that you find some serene and tranquil moments in this little bit of time that we're going to spend together. I don't know too much about the ins and outs of ASMR, but what I do know is that I love to relax and unwind and meditate um, and delve into my senses, which is what we're going to do today. I'm going to show you some things around my room in my sanctuary, and sanctuary has always been something very important to me and I always make sure that my surroundings feel safe and fulfilling and I always want to make sure that my place where I'm in feels like a sanctuary where I can unwind and just truly relax. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you some of my things. I'm going to start off by pouring us a cup of tea to share. I really love tea. I even called my band Mystic Tea Party. Um, but the real reason behind that is a different story. But I love tea. I love to drink. I've actually got two beverages for us to share. Today, I'm going to show you my favorite tea set that I drink from nearly every single day. Here she is. She's been brewing. Sorry if you're not a fan of wet noises. I promise there is a lot more. I personally love wet noises. Sweet. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna give you some now. Drink up. Good. Well done. Now, before I get showing you all of the wonderful things in my room, 
I am just going to invite you to breathe with me and take some long, slow, deep breaths just so we can mellow out and really unwind before we explore some sensory delight. Okay, so I want you to breathe in for four seconds, hold for four seconds, and then out for four seconds. So can you do that with me? Okay, good. <laughs> Just to really step into a calm an harmonious, centered state of being. Ready? In. First thing I'm going to show you today are my crystals. There's actually a little bit too many to hold all in one hand. So I'm going to show you a couple at a time, maybe one at a time. has healing and protective qualities. I like it because it's purple and purple is my favorite color. This one is my rose quartz. I have I have a few different rose quartz. Um, I actually have one that is phallic shaped. Two actually that are phallic shaped, literally in the shape of a um a, a thingy, and <laughs> but I'm not going to show those today. Can show them maybe another time, but this one is obviously gorgeous, stunning. But it is the crystal that is related to your heart chakra, apparently. And I like to wear it on my heart, just lay there and have it on my heart when my heart needs a little bit of healing. Did you know that quartz crystals melt ice faster than the palm of your hand? This is actually something that I've tested and maybe I can test it next time I do an ASMR video. But something about the molecular structure of a rose quartz or any quartz crystal I think I 
I believe the atoms are moving really quickly and so it actually melts ice faster than the palm of your hand. So you know it must be pretty powerful. And I'm going to take all of the energy that's in this crystal and give it to you. I'm just going to place it on your third eye. So I hope you can feel it. Let me know if you do. That's some pretty powerful stuff, right? This next one is one of my favourites. It's called Moonstone and I wore it around my neck for three years and I never took it off um, because they say that it is a travelling stone and protects you on your travels. It also says that it increases fertility and to never wear it when you make love if you're not trying to have a child but luckily for me um, I don't have to worry about that so I was wearing it around my neck 24-7 I just think it's so beautiful I'm just going to show you these two together this is another one that I got on my travels it's a tiger's eye and it's good for aligning you with ambition and getting you back on track with your life's purpose these are two very important stones to me when I was living overseas they were quite a staple in my routine so I'm just going to see what it sounds like when I rub them together and maybe something magical is going to happen, like a genie will appear or something. Thing. I haven't done that before. I'm going to try and get through the rest of them because I've got lots to show you. I actually I don't have any idea what the names of these ones are. This is a labradite, and it's another one that I've used quite a lot because it's very good for alleviating anxiety. And as someone who has anxiety and loves to alleviate the stress, I was using this one a lot when I was feeling overwhelmed, just lying with it my forehead where all my busy thoughts are so maybe I'm going to do that to you and it can absorb some of those busy thoughts that have happened in your head during the day feels different. These ones are really beautiful, so I'm just going to quickly show you what they look like. I 
This one is on the tip of my tongue, but I can't seem to remember what it's called. T turquoise, something or other. <laughs> I really want to learn what these ones are. If anybody knows, you can let me know. Because I've lost their little pages that had all the information about them. One more. This one I got, I know it looks like Jupiter. I got really recently, my friend gave it to me. Um, and apparently, again, it's really powerful absorber and cleanser of negative energy. So I was holding it the other day when I was feeling a little bit stressed. And just the intention of picking something up, I think, is powerful enough whether or not the stones have powers and special abilities. I can't say for fact, but I believe they do. And maybe it was the fact that this looked like Jupiter. Something about holding it made me feel really at ease. I'm going to show you a couple of books now. is called Mushroom Magic. It's about psilocybin mushrooms. It's basically a field guide on all things psilocybin. Got some really gorgeous art. I can read something to you. Let me just find a suitable page. Conocybe is a genus of lawn and woodland mushrooms that are easily overlooked. Those that grow in lawns often come up overnight and have fallen over before noon. These are often called dunce caps because the shape of the cap is similar to the classic dunce's hat. The mushrooms are small, with caps rarely one inch across and stems that are slender, sometimes long, three inches or more, and generally very fragile. Most are some shade of brown, with gills that are sometimes a bright cinnamon brown. The spore print is brown, the cinnamon brown. Conocybe cyanopus and Conocybe smithy have stems that stain blue near the base. While thin and fragile, if found in numbers, they have been shown to produce hallucinations when ingested. Let's 
have a drink break. Some of you may remember this from my Renaissance Fair video. It's an unopened bottle of mead from Boutique Artesian Thistle Meadery. Cheers. Oh my god. It's extremely tasty. It really tastes so sweet, like what the nectar of a flower would taste like, I think. Not in an overly sweet way. Just perfect. Next up, I want to show you some of my favorite things in the entire world. Um, those things are essential oils. I use essential oils every single day. I diffuse them in my diffuser. I wear them. I sometimes put them into my skincare products. I sometimes just pick up the bottle and smell them. I recently made a video talking about my sense of smell and how important it is to me and how I used to really take it for granted but now I don't anymore and it was pretty much all thanks to essential oils and discovering the power of your scent they also have some other really good properties as well but my favourite thing about them is the smell and how they make me feel Afterwards, after I smell them. <laughs> so, an all time favorite of mine. One that gets daily use is a classic lavender. So relaxing. Mm. Reminds me of being in Croatia. 
Croatia two years ago and having lavender ice cream. If you've never had lavender ice cream before, it's delicious. It was summertime and my partner and I were on holiday and we were walking around the streets of Split and it's such a beautiful city. We were in the old town and the streets are paved with the most beautiful stone and everything is like a light white cream colour buildings, the floor, and it's complemented with such quirky architecture, very Italian. The energy there is really gentle, you're next to the sea, and we were walking around the streets on a warm summer's night and I had seen so many lavender decorations and merchandise at all the local trading stores and I was fascinated and I knew lavender must have a pretty big influence in Croatia and we went to an ice cream store and in the ice cream store, they were selling lavender ice cream and lavender and blueberry sorbet. So I was really interested and I wanted to try some. And the second I got it, I knew I had been missing out big time because that was some of the most delicious and refreshing herbal tasting sorbet I've ever had in my life um, and I truly hope to eat that sorbet again if you have never tried it before I highly recommend sourcing some out I'm just going to show you one more book and then do a little closing ceremony together don't worry, it's not over yet. This book is a little fairy guide. If you don't know, I really love my fairies. series about fairies. If anyone's interested, I can link that below if you want to read it. Maybe I can do a little ASMR reading of my mum's book. <laughs> Seems like an appropriate thing to read. Fairy Relationships with Humans 
Our modern day fascination with fairies is nothing new. If we scratch the surface of virtually any culture's mythology, we'll find a fabulous body of fairy lore. Some myths say fairies preceded us on Earth by eons, and we've coexisted with them, albeit not always harmoniously. Since people first set foot on planet Earth, According to Irish legend, the fairies known as Tuatha de Danann were the ancestors of the Irish race. Cambodians believe they descended from spirits called Nagas and Naginis. The ancient Romans revered nature spirits, i.e. fairies, even before they began worshipping gods and goddesses. Greek mythology says that a nymph raised Zeus, the head honcho of the Greek pantheon. Jewish legend tells us that Adam and Eve birthed fairies called the Muzikim. Might this mean that we all have a bit of fairy blood in us? Well, I know that I do. show you a candle of mine. It's nothing fancy, but it smells delicious. This is a gingerbread scented candle that I just got from Kmart. relaxing. Apparently, people like the sound of this as well. I'm going to put this down. Beautiful. Candles are so nice. And now we're going to just do a little bit of recentering. 
before I send you on your way. We're going to do a different type of breathing. So we're going to breathe in a long inhale. Take an extra inhale at the top and then exhale with me. Before I leave you, there's two people I want to introduce you to. You've been sitting down here with me the whole time. This is Lossi. It's like Shama. Shama. And this is Yaki. Hello. Mm. So soft and snuggly. I love stuffed animals. They're just so cozy. They make me feel so safe. And when I really need that soft touch affection and I don't have anyone around no pets no people I often lean for the wonderful company of stuffed animals because you can just hold them and they'll be there for you yes I'm just an overgrown child <laughs> aren't we all And to end our time together, I'm just going to ask one thing of you. I want you to look at my sparkles. I want you to look at this sparkle. Now I want you to look at this sparkle. And now I want you to look at this sparkle. Whisper the 